is that you just have to call on specialists. They account for everything. I mean, Ed, you talked about 200, uh, 200 customers. In transplantation, there's probably fewer than 125 physician prescribers out there in Canada who control all of the transplant business. Very easy to target. You know who they are. They're all very, very critical. But when you get into these mixed market places, and the ones that, that, that we're knowledgeable in, and certainly urology and dermatology, is that you're probably looking at a split of 80 to 90 percent of the volume comes from primary care, and the other 10 or 20 percent comes from the specialty side of the market. So you've got 32,000 GPs that account for 80 percent of the business, yet if it's a small marketplace, what are you going to do? Because the overall profitability uh, will suffer as a result. Uh, what's been discussed uh, certainly all morning is funder payer situation. Uh, you know, the public versus private. Uh, we're not blessed, and certainly Ron uh, talked about it in the old days where you got NOC, you got listings, all was good, but you're really looking at that three to four year time frame before you, you know, if you're successful with CDR, perhaps getting some successful funding from the vast majority of the provinces. So that needs to be taken into consideration. Top line versus profitability. Well, when, when this comes up, uh, when I'm talking to our senior management in Tokyo, they basically say, Michael son, the answer is yes. Um, and, uh, and basically, they want both. But clearly, it's a very difficult challenge to get both when you're dealing in smaller market sizes. And, and I think it's, it's how comfortable are you in uh, your, your sort of a longer term plan. Are you going to get to profitability in three years or four years? Or do you need to get to profitability much more quickly? So yes, for us the answer is both. My favorite subject, reach and frequency. Um, those at, people at Estellas that are in a room know this is one of my pet peeves. I love talking about it pretty well any time of the day. And I guess uh, it's an observation that I'll make and you'll certainly know what my opinion is on this is that uh, when I started in a business, there was no call average. Some bright light said we should put a call average in, it was four, four calls a day, guess what? Most reps got 4.1. Then a, the call average was told to, you know what, four is good, let's go to 4.5. We hit 4.6, and on and on and on, and it escalated. So we sort of got over the call average thing and we went into reach and frequency. Well, guess, lo and behold, what's happened with reach and frequency is that we reach all the customers and the frequency has gone up. Yet if you take a look at market research out there, it's harder to see doctors. You got less time with the doctors that you get to see. And there are more no-sees now than there were in the past. Somehow the two don't jive. And I guess the question that I ask is do you really believe that the activity that you're getting is the activity that you're getting? And I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. Um, the next point really in, in the whole area of reach and frequency is this called on list. And I guess uh, that's another pet peeve of mine. And um, I'm trying to remember um, who mentioned it. I think it was Robin that said fire customers. And, uh, and you know what, I think it's something that certainly as an organization, we've given our representatives a, a great deal of flexibility in terms of their call list because we don't have enough representation to call on doctors who call on 80% of the potential business. You know, you usually have to call on about 8,000 primary care. We're well below that number as an organization. It just doesn't seem to make sense for us to go beyond that at this point in time. However, um, every pharmaceutical company who buys decile data, and we saw 74%, I think it was, that buy decile data, we're all calling on the same GPs. A high prescriber is a high prescriber. So we're vying for that time, harder to see these doctors, they know they're important, and at a point in time, after you've made a couple of calls, you know, even four or five calls, if you're not moving that doctor, the old model would say, keep pounding on that door, keep going at it. We've taken another tactic, we've got plenty of other doctors to go after. And so we allow the flexibility, certainly within our sales force, to go out there and call that call list and fire customers because it's just not profitable for us to go out there and do those things. So I think the future challenges uh, for us, and I mentioned before, was really we have fewer blockbuster drugs out there. So I think the specialty market, and we saw that most, comp no, most people in this audience feel we're going to move more towards specialty products. 
So I think everybody's going to be asking this same question, whether you know, how far or how many resources you're going to put against primary care. There's obviously, as I mentioned, more specialty drugs in a pipeline. There will continue to be more stringent uh, funding and payer guidelines that we have to play within. And, you know, we really have to focus on profitability and, and probably many of our shareholders are asking more for short-term uh, return on investment. And last but not least, uh, um, that Aaron certainly mentioned is the emerging customers. We're seeing more customers and I think we're going to have to pay attention to them. So it's going to be really important for us to be very, very flexible. So in conclusion, I think the type of product and the size of the market is critical to your decisions in terms of GP or not the GP. That funding or payer is critical. Flexibility in your sales force, being able to move around is going to be a must. And we need to be innovative and responsive to our customers. So thank you very much.